This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock, joined by John Brummett of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Good to see you, sir. Good to be here. Thank you. We had two comments last week off of our conversation that I think you're going to need to address right off of the top. Oh, number, no. Number one, uh, Donna Bragg uh, over at the Arkansas Scholarship yes. Lottery says we have to come up with a name for your peach drink that you make in the blender there. What do you, what do you think we should call it? Well, I call it the Arkansas Snow Cone for Grown Ups, and I think that's <laughs> perfectly fine. But I must tell you and her, and the reason I didn't respond to her was it too much trouble, but I'm glad I get to now. Yes. Uh, that's a that's a known drink. Oh, is it? It's called the peach fuzz. Oh, yeah. and I've had I've had uh, women across Arkansas say it was their their a college sorority drink. It's how they learned to drink, and uh, I can provide uh, the recipe. Uh, it's very good, uh, and if she'll private message me, but it's it's got a name. I got it's you. Called the peach fuzz. Okay. All right. Uh, the other is uh, you you and I were suggested to moderate a democratic debate because apparently I saw that. they were. <laughs> Not pleased with the ones that were going on. Well, it, it was do also. You want to, do you want to moderate a Democratic? Debate? I think that you and I, with all forty-six of them right there, the Demo <laughs> There's forty-seven. Okay, I think we could. I think we could do a good. I think Jake Tapper is pretty good. I've, my regard for him has gone up as a result. But uh, but but I think we would be excellent. And this guy, this guy kind of irked me. You know, it, somebody said. Hey, Chairman Perez of the Democratic Party, why don't you have a debate moderated by uh, uh, journalists who make less than $120,000 a year so they can be... And you a, make like three times that, and, so... And, and, and you own a... You're a media mogul. Right. Now, we're not going to go into what we make, but why do these people assume that we're just low, low-income people? I don't know. Maybe it's the, our suits or, or the way we look. Well, you got a new tie. I do. It's extra long. It's Trump. But yeah. uh, that's... Uh, Anyway, I'd love to do it. Okay. And I, I was pleased that, that one of our viewers thought we would, nominated us for that on a national level. I think we would do superbly. In fact, I think you get, with all due respect, a level of commentary right here from the Channel 7 studio in Little Rock on talk, business, and politics, equal to or better than anything you're going to get anywhere in the country. Uh, there you go. If I do say Spoken so like myself. Spoken like a true professional. Right. Spoken like an egomaniac. Okay. <laughs> Let, uh, let us turn to a very serious topic. Uh, over the weekend, there have been two uh, major mass shootings. There was also a lot of gun violence in Chicago over the weekend right. as well. El Paso and, and Dayton were the scenes for some horrific uh, mass shootings, which are becoming obviously commonplace in America. Uh, the president tweeted on early Monday morning that it was the fake news fault for all of this. Uh, he wanted to tie immigration reform to background checks. He didn't come out and say any of that in his prepared remarks, which were more geared towards um, video games and other problems that uh, apparently caused this. So he did condemn racist commentary, though. What, what do you make of where this is? Does it change the political calculus any this weekend? Roby, I believe for the moment, and moments can be fleeting, this one is different. I do. Parkland was almost different. Las Vegas was different. Uh, started to be different. And then it always fades back to politics as usual. The fact that we have in the El Paso case a clear example of, of a racist manifesto, a screed that we can read and we can, and we can see that it, it has some relationship to the anti-immigrant rhetoric sometimes used by our president, it becomes a political issue. And then to follow that more than the others, and then to follow that hours later by more slaughter, both with these automatic firing 100 round magazines, it's just, it's uh, right now, right now, the, the, the uh, dialogue is different. At the very least, in Arkansas, I had, a con I had a communication with uh, Governor Hutchinson yesterday, he has a big background on all these gun issues, as you know, and he says, when he was a young 35-year-old prosecutor, he, 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 he prosecuted and, and in person negotiated with the covenant, the sword, and the arm of the Lord, a, a militant uh, uh, white supremacist group. He says that is re-emerging in the state. He tells me, and you can read about it in tomorrow's column, that he's gonna, that it's, it's up to political leaders to address this. And he's had state intel police intelligence briefings. He's had people tell him there is evidence of new reason to be afraid. And he's gonna be saying more about it. So at the very least, 
that element is going to happen. Whether the gun control legislation amounts to anything, whether we get any, I remain dubious. I, I simply do. The governor won't discuss it. I asked him to. He wouldn't. The president, Trump, comes out and, and throws out, yeah, background checks. Yeah, we need some vigorous background checks. He said that before, after Vegas. The House has passed some yeah. background check legislation that's in the Senate. Right. After, right. And after, after Vegas, he started talking a little gun control. My view of the president, well expressed and well known, is that he is a creature of his media portrayal at the moment. And I think if it's all in vogue that people, protesters, mourners are shouting at the governor of Ohio, gun control. I think the president sees that and, and in order to cope with the media moment, he is willing to say that. But he also was willing to say, we need comprehensive uh, 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 immigration reform with the Democrats and I'll work with Schumer. He, he said all kinds of things that later his staff and the Republican establishment explains to him, no, you can't do that. That's probably fleeting in this case too. But at any rate, today, as we sit here, there's going to be new attention paid in the state and nation to this reemergence of white nationalist terrorist groups, which is what they are. And we're going to at least think about maybe a little bit of actual pressure toward some sort of gun legislation. On to, uh, back to the white supremacist threat. Right. How do you address that if, if, from a government perspective, and I know the governor did not share details with you, but again, just as part of the state and the national dialogue, you can condemn it, you can unplug it in some way, in some part, but it's still going to find a way to get out there and, and spread virally because there are too many platforms in order to share all of that now. What do you do? You can't go arrest someone that's not breaking the law or doing anything just because well, they have hateful rhetoric. So what, what, are, what is the solution? The, that was my question to him that he did not respond to except to say he's going to have more to say that he's giving it a lot of thought. But if there are, and there are, uh, websites or deep websites where these people are talking to each other with hatred and talking about criminal activity, there is a way to there, there is a way to infiltrate, there is a way to investigate, there's a way to monitor, and there's a way to to uh, intercept. Uh, there's got to be. Just there's like we do with Islamic terrorism yes, in this country. Yes, it's the it's the same thing, except as I heard Pete Buttigieg say the other day, and I don't know if it's true, we had now had more deaths of Americans from domestic terrorism than on 9-11. No, I mean that's that's nearly eight years compared to one day, nonetheless. Uh, yet whatever we're doing to intercept, to intercede, to, to, to monitor and to stop uh, international terrorism, same kinds of things are going to have to be done, whatever they may be, and I'm not the police or the intelligence expert, I can tell you, um, because, I mean, the governor said in, in, in a, in a follow-up thing, he, he he has heard from people in Arkansas who say they see evidence of, they're scared, they're frightened from what they see. It's time for government to do something about that. And of course it's long past, I just say it because in this occasion I have to say it. The Second Amendment, the right to bear arms in a well-regulated militia, never in a founder's wildest dreams protected a guy with body armor going through an entertainment district at midnight in an urban center with, with semi-automatic military style weapon that just fires over and over from these, from these magazines of rounds. And never, there is no, if, if, we can, if we can deny a person under the Second Amendment uh, a nuclear weapon, and I believe we can, then we can deny other things too. I think there's, a, I think there's overwhelming public support for that. We had an assault weapon ban before. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it couldn't get it re-upped. It doesn't affect anybody's, uh, any, anybody's basic gun rights in this country. I, I just, right now, right now, I just, uh, I'm interested to see, are we gonna actually act? We'll see. Let's turn our attention to some other state matters here. Uh, Representative Mickey Gates of Hot Springs uh, has worked out some sort of agreement to pay back some back taxes that he owes uh, for multiple years. They didn't pay state income taxes. The governor's called on him to resign. There seems to be some pressure in the House of Representatives for him to step down. He says he's not going 
anywhere. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a state legislature le legislator with some issues. Um, but what do you? Where do you? It's been a while. It's been a matter of hours. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's been. I'm, I'm oh, being I sarcastic. See. You were being, being ironic. Uh, okay. What do you think happens ultimately with Mickey Gates? Do you think the House puts uh, pressure on him to step down, or they just wind up stripping him of uh, committee assignments and? Uh, the latter. The latter. That they they'll take some internal housekeeping measures to uh, so that the rest of the politicians can claim they've done something. He seems rather stubborn on this point. He got good lawyering and he got a settlement in which he will happily tell you there was no plea of guilty. You cannot ask him like you did Mutt Jones. There's no felony conviction for anything here. He simply pled no contest and agreed to a repayment plan and now he's going to be talking to the DFNA folks about just how he's going to do that and how much and, the, uh, and how much is really owed. And he, The governor last year when the first news of this broke called on him to resign. Uh, others did. He said heck no and got elected overwhelmingly. Why? Because he's Republican, he's for guns, he's against abortion, he's, he wants to make America great again, he's in a rural conservative district. I bet he get elected again, frankly. Because that's the formula now in Arkansas. Got an R, pro-gun, anti-abortion, get you a MAGA hat, you got it. I mean, you're, 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 you're set for life. Uh, uh, so I, th I think it, but I do think that House Speaker Shepard has indicated that he, and he's a cautious lawyer by nature, I don't know if we can evict him based on, uh, he hadn't said this, but he's implied, don't know. But we don't have a guilty plea or verdict here. So I don't know if we can, we can, we can uh, ask him, but there will be, there are lots of things that uh, internally. Yeah, that, censure or something. Oh, they like can, that. they yeah. could yeah. censure, they, he could, he could, he could have no uh, seniority on any committee, he could, he could be, uh, th there are things in there, and I think that's what'll happen. And I think if he wants to stay under those circumstances and run again, I wouldn't bet against him. All right. All right. Um, speaking of running again, yeah. two political developments from Steve Bronner uh, gets a little bit of one of the news scoops and uh, the Democrat Gazette gets another. Your buddy, Senator Jason Rapert, oh, yeah. running for lieutenant governor in 2022 and maybe Asa for president in 2024. Yeah. Which, which bumper sticker are you putting on your car? Well, I'd sooner put Asa in 24 than I would Jason for anything. Even though Jason and I, we've got a strong and vibrant relationship as you may know. He tweeted this last week. Did you see uh, his sermon where he uh, invoked me and uh, a humorous remark I made about him? I couldn't get what the spiritual reference was, but I don't think he was praising my spirituality. Anyway, uh, it was, we, we go way back and we've got- uh, He prays for you, John. He prays he for prays you. For, he prays and for you. And you need all the prayer I, you can get. I'll take it <laughs> in case it's getting through. Yeah. Uh, you know. And, and you may do the same. Thank you. And, uh, if you want to pray for me. Uh, but this is interesting. He, he is, uh, he's on a, I, I thought Rapert might be on a leadership track in the Senate because I think there could come a time. And he's actually, his, his rhetoric and manner on spiritual issues and his, his, his hyperbolic manner on those belies the fact that as chairman of insurance and commerce and some other things, he's a, been a, competent legislator. I thought he might be rising to the president pro tem, and I dreaded the day he would be president pro tem. Now I've got to worry about the day he's a heart, he's a Sarah Sanders heartbeat from the governorship. If he, if he's lieutenant governor and she's governor, which is possible. This is a, lieutenant governor is no kind of a job. It's a part-time job. When Mike Huckabee was lieutenant governor, he ran this nonprofit called Action America. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all railed about the ethical violations, but he, that was his job. He'd go around speaking to spiritual groups, religious groups, and he'd take their money into Action America. And we couldn't see who was individually paying money to the lieutenant governor. But in the end, it didn't matter much because the lieutenant governor doesn't have anything to do uh, to, to use that power. So I think Rayford has figured this is one a place where I can have a higher public profile and continue my Holy Ghost ministries or whatever those other things are where he raises a lot of money, uh, uh, continue that, and be in a position, should he choose, at some point to seek to be the governor of the state. So I think it's actually a sort of a smart political positioning for him, yeah. tactically, merely tactically. 
Uh, I can see why he would be doing it. I'm not sure he would agree to you being one of the moderators of a debate if he runs for lieutenant governor. Would you like to do that, you know, though? It might surprise you. Yeah. You know, I have done a, f a very few inst instances in which I've, I've interviewed here on this program. That's true. He has agreed. One time he came on. And, uh, uh, with me. You guys uh, have done it in studios twice. twice. Yeah, we went up to the Big Mac building. I and think he did a uh, two-hour documentary up I there. I think he talking. likes. I think he likes the sparring. Uh, let's see. Well, you know he's going to ask for a third appearance well, now that you've brought him up as prominently and well, discussed no, him like it, we you're have. You're going to have to deal with that. He's going to say, if you're going to let him <laughs> sit there and talk about me, you need to have me on for an equal amount to of time. To talk about you. And so, or whatever. <laughs> so you, you've asked for it. Uh, but, uh, but well, he was in the news. We have to talk yeah, about the news. Yeah. That's what we get. Like it or do. not, we had so, to bring him up. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. John Brumman of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Thank you so much. My man. All right. Yeah. That's all for today's program. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Oh, I love you too, Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me. I did. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners.